that's Robbie Roberts and the sun. He got caught in the moonlight. Okay. Uh, I've got a strange book here that I got from the library. It is Gene Simmons on power. Remember Gene Simmons. Now I'm going to figure that this is the real Gene Simmons um, from Kiss. It is. It is. It is. It is. And there he is. Gene Simmons from Kiss. And this is one of his books. I haven't read it yet, but it looks very interesting. Um, Dream is Destiny. What does that mean? Okay, well, I've got uh, um, Sergeant Picard here and uh, Corporal Kirk. Which is better? I don't know. Random page for Gene Simmons' book. It's going to say, mm, Of all the talents bestowed upon men, none is so precious as the gift of oratory. He who enjoys it wields a power more durable than that of a great king. And that was uh, Sir Winston Churchill. Churchill said, You will never get to the end of the journey if you stop to shy a stone at every dog that barks. What shy a storm? Shy a stone. It must be throw a stone at dogs that bark. I don't know. I'm really not impressed too much with those. What am I impressed with? Um, they want me to talk about the quantum slit experiments. Uh, if you can remember high school physics, they talked about the uh, double slit experiments uh, to show whether wave or particle is the nature of light. And um, I can't even remember. It was so many million years ago. But basically what they came to the conclusion was um, it's a both. So... Um, you know, forward a hundred years from these experiments where we are now. And what are we thinking? Uh, we're, well, people are getting more and more into the idea that we are um, the collapse of the quantum wave. So uh, you are a quantum wave. And when you collapse your waveform, you end up with a body. How do we get a, a body in 3D? Um, I saw an interesting idea. If you, um, I don't know how to explain it. It's a 3D thing and you have two planes at right angles. Planes, like, you know, that's a plane. One plane this way and one plane this way. And on each plane, you have a sine wave or a cosine wave. And you put them both together. And in the middle, in this example, they showed kind of a helix moving up and down with because of the two waves. And if you can make the waves very complicated, instead of just being up and down sine waves, but you have little squiggles and big squiggles, and you put them all together, and you've got me on this plane, front side, and my face side side. You put them together, and you end up with a 3D head. Is that what they mean? I don't know. I'm trying to put it all together. And, I mean, how else are you going to create three dimensions? You have to have a, a plane this way and a plane this way. Put them together. And then if you want the fourth and the fifth dimension. Um, well, uh, I was on Amazon yesterday. And I saw a book about the science of the movie Interstellar. And this might be a good one for you. You can go to Amazon. Find this uh, Science of Interstellar. get uh, Select Kindle ebook, And then you get a download of a free sample to get you into it. And then go to YouTube and look up Tesseract. Um, I found an amazing video 
last summer on Tesseracts. It was from a German student, just a young guy. I'm, oh, my God, smart. Oh, my God. Um, did I really get it? No, I love listening to it, but eh, it's too complicated for me. But if you go and see Interstellar, um, I, mean, I don't know if it's available anywhere now, but it was in the movie. Was it a year ago? Anyway, um, that is Higher Dimensions, More Dimensions Than Our 3D World by using a Tesseract. And using a Tesseract, apparently you can travel through space and time in new ways. Hmm, what else am I going to talk to you about? Um, reality. What is reality? Uh, I'm of the opinion that our reality is, well, someone says strange. Oh, yes, it's way stranger than we ever imagined. On the surface, it appears uh, it's just, you know, normal life. But when you start experiencing deja vus and um, premonitions and you start seeing license plates with um, words on them, and then later on, you're watching an episode of Picard, for example, the new TV show. And uh, then you see that uh, the license plate you saw yesterday is of a character who appears in the Picard show. In, in my town, you see a license plate. And then, you know, the next day you watch a show. Maybe not Picard. Maybe it's, I don't know what it is. But uh, there's a connection between a license plate that struck you because it was one of those fancy license plates that's got a real word and it's not just random letters. And lo and behold, that shows up in a TV show you watch the next day. Um, synchronicities and deja vus. And you start to wonder, how on earth is this done? And I think what the truth is, is that the universe knows... everything that you've seen today and then tomorrow it uh, looks it already it doesn't really look it knows where everything is so if there was any word like orange that I saw today on a license plate uh, tomorrow when I turn on let's say I go to Netflix and um, it has me go through and pick a show that it knows orange is going to be a prominent thing that I'm going to notice. So that's how it does it. And how does it make me go and find the show? Well, it's running me. And I'm, it's running you. It's hidden. The knower of the universe is hidden from you. But it is feeding you all of the thoughts and ideas. And all the other people around you are getting fed the thoughts and ideas by the thing that knows. Is it you? Let's call it a different aspect of you. Why do I say that? Because it's not you, but it is um, related to you. Uh, if you go to Jane Roberts, the author, and uh, she channeled a very smart being called Seth. Seth said um, a number of things. You create your own reality, for example. Oh, God. Well, this is what happens. Sometimes the universe gives me something to talk about, Seth and Jane Roberts. And once I get there and I've said those, there was more that they wanted me to say because they were giving me more. I could sort of feel the whole big thought form of everything. And uh, once I said that, um, they went whoop and wiped my mind and that thought is gone. Uh, so oh, we were talking about aspects. Um, Seth said uh, in the future, and Seth, uh, the Seth books came out around 1975, but he said uh, the biggest thing that humans are going to be studying in the future is aspect psychology. So it's a new kind of psychology, and it's about, uh, because we're all related, uh, we're actually aspects of one another. And that's what Seth said um, will be something that people would be very interested in, interested in um, archetypes from psychology are always good to understand. 
if you get a good idea of archetypes, uh, you'll be well on your way to understanding how to interpret tarot cards. So you can do tarot card um, analysis for people. Um, yeah, there's um, the Jane Roberts books are very interesting. Try one Seth book, maybe Seth Speaks, and then you could try um, Oversoul 7. And um, there's another one I have that I didn't get into. I've got it on my list of books that are piled up there. And it's called, um, oh hell, uh, Psychic Politics. So there's quite a few things. Jane Roberts is very interesting. And there are, uh, there's at least one YouTube of an old interview with Jane Roberts. And uh, the voice changes when Jane Roberts, a female, does Seth a male. It's a different voice. And it's very, it's not what I expected from Seth. Seth was not what I expected when I heard the video. So you can go to YouTube and look for Jane Roberts and Seth. Uh Anything else I want to tell you? Mm. Um. Mm. Really? I'm terribly sorry. I'm not getting anything interesting to look to talk to you about so thank you for turning in please subscribe and click on the little bell if you want to be notified maybe it's going to ring too many times because i put up so many videos uh and share it out if you find it absolutely dull and boring and you want to uh, send it to your worst enemy send my video to your worst enemy and go ha ha watch this ha 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 uh hate from me i'm harry weaver <laughs>